hello. Welcome to Cytoscape's very own Star Wars podcast. We are Dago Boys. Mm -hmm. We are joined today by the Dago Cats. Oh. There he is. Stop He's just it. hanging out. This is Tony. Chewie over there. He's he little Dago boyed out. And uh, yeah. And what are today we talking about today, Hunter? What are we talking about? We're talking about Obi-Wan. Um, the cats, they didn't love the show. Um, they didn't pay too much attention. They're kind of in and out. Okay. Uh, they're there more for cuddles, uh, okay. more so than the viewing experience. But gotcha. so they enjoyed it. I think that's their review. Yeah. Well, I think right. they just enjoyed that we were in one spot and they could just hang out. You know. <laughs> okay. Right, Tony. Your little dumb mouth open. Wow. Oh, you're just so cute. And uh, that's a wrap. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like, subscribe, share uh, for everyone who loves Dago Boys and Dago Cats. No, we're talking. We're talking about the episode three. We're talking about the third part. Of Obi Wan, we're keeping your intro. We're keeping the cats. That's the most views we're getting on Side Escape for a while. So we're keeping the cats. You think so? Oh yeah. All right. That's gonna be the the cover is gonna be a cat where uh, normally Obi Wan is. Is that Tony or Star? Come it's here. a star. Uh, Hunter, we're talking about the third part of of uh, Obi Wan, and then in our next episode we'll talk about the fourth part. We're a little behind. We are. But part three of Obi Wan, the the big one. Full spoilers. Directed again by Deborah Chow. What did you think of the, the first time we see uh, some Darth Vader, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi action? What did you think of the third part? It was some cool shit. It was some really <laughs> cool shit. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. The, um, yeah. I thought the, the whole episode, um, favorite episode of the four so far, mm -hmm. um, especially the last, the last half of the episode is my favorite, but it's also, it has parts that I really don't love and we'll talk mm. about it, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, overall, I'm pretty positive on the episode. I think it's great seeing Vader again, super menacing, mm -hmm. super badass. It was it, super cool. It was awesome. Yeah, I think um, so. I, I loved I loved the third episode. Like pretty much from the start to finish, I liked them being on this like the mining planet. I forget what its name was. Um, do you know it off the top of your head? Uh, M has a P in there. It's start yeah more 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 power. It's something like that. Marzipan, yeah. Marzipan. Okay, so when they're on Marzipan, yeah. we're gonna call it that from right now. Um, I liked just literally from when they land and like Obi Wan's still struggling with like the fact that Anakin's alive. He's calling yeah. out for Qui Gon again. Then like you see Hayden Christensen. The the hallucination yeah. was awesome. Awesome. Now, just talking about episode three. We're not gonna talk about anything about episode four. I'm a little bummed that like we only got to see him once in the episode. I thought we were gonna keep seeing like Hayden Christensen throughout the episode, like he was gonna keep seeing Anakin, but he only saw him the one I, time. That would be very cool, actually. That'd, that'd yeah. be that'd be a really cool thing, just like seeing different hallucinations, seeing him pop up, like not quite jump scares, but like you know they're in that back room of the storage unit or whatever, and like he turns around and sees Anakin. Like yeah. that would be super cool. That would have been really sure. cool. I just would have loved that. Um, but then I love like the guy picking him up, the the character voiced by Zach Braff from Scrubs. Um, I loved him. Uh, Freck? Freck. Was Freck. Was, Freck. Yeah, was it? it was Freck. Okay. It was Freck. I love that, like, whole sequence with Freck of that, like, he's pro-Empire, which, like, we don't yeah. see a lot of people in Star Wars that aren't Stormtroopers be like, I love the Empire. No, dude loves the Empire. Yeah. I love his, he's got a line, and he goes, nothing's wrong with a little order. And I was like, I love <laughs> yeah. that. What a, what a dude great. Dude just loves stability. Hell yeah. Even like that, we never see that. So I thought that was really cool to see in Star Wars. And then, dude, yeah. the scene with all the Stormtroopers... And how fucking tense that is. Yeah, man. Oh, well, and my favorite part about that scene is that Obi-Wan is the one that fucks it up. Yeah. yeah. And Leia has to, like, come in and, like, play Help. hero and save the day and, like, you know, smooth things over. It was awesome. Well, and she's, like, that the only was... one that is moving the plot. For, like, she's the one that's making the actions to get them to progress where he's just, like... He, that like... that scene turned my view of, that, of, of the Leia character right now because the first two episodes, I didn't love Leia. Mm -hmm. um, I thought she was just a little bit... I don't know. I just didn't love her. She's yeah. a little too much, a little too smart for a 10 year old. But here, I think it's really cool how we see her. She is super smart. She's reading the situation and she's fixing things on the fly. And that, that turned her character around for me and, and around for me. And yeah, this was great. Yeah. yeah. I love like her interactions with Obi-Wan before they get on Freck's little ship. And he's like, okay, remember you're my daughter and like yeah. we're farmers. And he's like, she's like, okay. And he's like, and like, don't talk. And she goes, do I, can I not talk or like, do I not talk? And he goes like, you don't <laughs> talk. And then like five seconds later, she like walks up to the, to Freck and is like, Hey, can you help us? I love it. I was like, Fantastic. I just love that she has no regard for Obi-Wan's like rules. Yeah. Um, in that episode. And, um, yeah. And then I love the scene with the empire, with the stormtroopers. And then we find out a lot about Obi-Wan and like, cause he obviously has to talk about Padme again to Leia. Yeah. And I thought yeah. that was beautiful. And her asking if he was the, her father. Oh my God. Yeah. Heartbreaking. Do you like that Leia knows that she's adopted? 
I think that's really cool. Yeah, I don't really, I guess I don't really feel strongly either okay. way about it. It's just kind of like, I mean, I don't think it's too weird because in the real life world, mm -hmm. all the people that I know that have been adopted, you know, like when we were kids in grade school and that, like, like they knew that they were adopted around the same age of Leia. So I, yeah. I don't think it's strange. I think it'd be weirder if she didn't. Didn't. Just because I feel like that's not a, unless you're like a small, small child, I feel like that's not a normal thing to be like, to not know that you're, you're adopted. I don't know. I mean, I don't have a great no, no, no. exposure. No, I feel that, like I'm but. with you. I, Cause I like that somehow this show is going to fix the plot hole that Leia remembers Padme. Like, yeah, how do you Obi Wan's going to share though? something with her, where she's going to see glimpses of her. That they they have to. You mean like through the Force and all that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because that's how she describes it with with Luke is like, I've only only glimpses. Of, like, glimpses she's very yeah. beautiful and very sad. Yeah. And that's probably how Obi Wan remembers her. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. I'm fix that oh. little plot hole. I'm very excited about this. Because she's she's credited for all six episodes, right? She she's going to be in the whole thing. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. At this point, I definitely believe so. I mean, we've got two or two, three episodes left, depending on where you are watching this and how we're doing this. Yeah. Um, we yeah. have three episodes left. Um, okay, so when we get there, we meet, and then they have the great little action scene where he's fighting all the stormtroopers at the checkpoint. Dude, awesome. How awesome. cool was that scene where he shoots the stormtrooper off the watchtower, he gets sliced in half by the by the yeah. know, ray fence or whatever it was. Yeah. Awesome. I love it, and then I love that like he grabs uh, Freck as like a like a hostage. Like he's like totally I letting know. this guy like you can fucking die, dude. I don't care. Um, yeah. My favorite part about the whole sequence though is they like he beats them all, and it's really awesome. It's got the great thing of like the probe droid looking at him with the hood. Thought that was super cool. Super um, red. But then like he has to turn off the fence. But like if you, and he, like he like he can't get it to turn off the first time. And then he like shoots it or whatever. But like if mm -hmm. you look like five feet over the rocks, like the little rock wall, like you can easily just walk around this fence. Yep. Yep, it's, it's, just, it's just chilling in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's I just, just love it. But he's like, oh, I can't get it to open. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just walked around, Obi-Wan, all right. Yeah, um, yeah. And we'll then we it. get um, a Tala. Is that her name? Tala? Uh, just Tala, yeah. Tala. Yeah. yeah, I like that her character's introduction where you think she's like an evil. That you're like, oh, they're screwed. They're so cool. So yeah. cool. So cool. Then we get to go to the path, Hunter. Fuck yeah, we do. Now I gotta ask you, did you cheer a little bit when uh, Obi-Wan said a certain name? Quinlan Boss still alive. Quinlan Boss still alive. He's doing his thing. He's helping. He's either helping Jedi escape, or he was one of the Jedi that escaped and has a new identity. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna at some point we're gonna get live action Quinlan Boss. Yeah, I yeah. don't think it's Obi Wan. I don't think we see it in this show. No, 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 no. no. But I'm sure it's gonna be a, a different Disney Plus series. Mm -hmm. um, did you see the the fan edit going on Reddit of uh, Jason Momoa as Quinlan Boss? Yeah. Which actually worked. It wasn't bad. Not bad. Not bad. He's yeah. like way too jacked. Though. They had to like put him way on like some very jacked. slender body in the, the Photoshop. <laughs> it has to be like the uh, the uh, Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> Where he rips off his arms. <laughs> yeah. I like that idea. Uh, yeah, he would be interested in Quaylen Voss. Just like a jacked out yeah. Quaylen Voss. Hey, those 10 years, he could have been just getting ripped. You never know. You never know. Yeah. They have a really great like um, training montage of him after Order 66. <laughs> He's throwing darts into like Vader's head. Um, yeah. No, but super cool. I, Very I love that he's still alive. I love that he's, I mean, because he's not a major character aside from Clone Wars and I think now Legends books. He isn't really mm -hmm. like, he's not a big guy. But no. I love that, you know, we get some callbacks. And if you watch the shows, you know who it is. If you don't, you're just like, oh, cool. That's another Jedi. But that's another Jedi. Yeah. And I, I what I love know. about it is it just adds the more to the mythos of like, there were a lot of other like surviving Jedi during the time of Luke. Like it wasn't yeah. that like he was just by himself. But, like, they weren't involved mm -hmm. in the Luke story. And I'm really excited to see what they end up doing with all these other Jedis that kind of insinuating that they're still alive and, and stuff. Because there's, really there's, cool. there's a decent amount that are still out there at this point and yeah. still alive. And if they're underground, if they're trying to build something bigger, if they're doing something, I'm sure we'll get other stories like that. So Yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah, for sure. And then it goes to nighttime. And Obi-Wan goes, <sighs> and it's fucking go time. Dude, Hunter, how brutal is that scene? When, when Darth Vader just walks out, and I'm watching this at midnight in my house, and he just grabs a dude out from his window with the force. His son comes running out, and Vader just goes, and the son's neck just cracks. Kills the son. I was yeah. like, oh, shit, Disney. Disney did this. This is incredible. Dude, this, this show is surpri like, it's surprisingly like violent and dark for a yeah. Star Wars. Like, yeah. We haven't seen this before. 
And I think it's great because it has to be that time period of just there is not really a lot of hope. Like, yeah. especially yeah. for Obi-Wan at this time too. Like, I mean, I really, I know, I want, I'm really curious what your kind of problems are with this sequence coming up. Um, I know there are just kind of some weird choices, but I think a lot for what this this next like 20 minute stretch of this episode is the Vader Obi Wan like first meeting. Yes, they yeah. they surprised me so like with how dark and twisted Vader was about and everything. It's super cool because we we've heard that he's you know this menace and mm-hmm. he's the big bad of the Star Wars universe at this time and he is. This horrible person. We've never really seen it aside from Rogue One. Had like Rogue One. Yeah. We we have the hallway scene. And all but he's that, fighting but soldiers, like, right? He's like fighting people that are fighting exactly, back. Exactly. Well, we haven't seen like just the just the he's killing people at random. He's just picking you. Sucks for you. You're, you're dead. dead. Like he's dragging that one lady. Him. Yeah. Wow. I love wow. that. I think it's amazing. And then, and I, I think it's the great. It's it's amazing for this, the first time that Obi Wan sees Anakin, and this is what Anakin's become, and. He's seen just this broke. Uh, he's this broken person, and seeing this completely different, you know, who was once his brother, once his his, his student, and he's yeah. just completely gone, completely dead. And he feels completely so responsible. I mean, he's like he. Yeah. Obi Wan starts to feel responsible, like, and that's what I love. Where Obi Wan just looks at him, he's like, "What have you become?" And he goes, "I yeah. am what you made when you me." You made me fantastic. Oh my god! And I was like, "This is the coolest line ever." Yes. Um, I, J- James Earl Jones is most likely an AI, which, by the way, in this his his voice is AI tech. I did hear that they they did the same thing with as Luke. in Mandalorian with Luke, mm-hmm. where they did that that AI splicing thing. And uh, as long as yeah. I, it's something like if they have an hour worth of like recordings, they can kind of make it into mm-hmm. whatever they want. Um, which is crazy. Which is kind of weird, right? Like it's very weird. Different topic, but yeah. like it's kind of unsettling where you can just make somebody say anything say anything yeah for for star yeah. wars purposes it's fucking awesome because we can use our cool. forever now and it's very cool but for every other purpose it's kind of it's like kind of scary um Lord. then we get the, okay so so i am what you made me is this the part that you don't like so there's there's bits and pieces yeah i'm of, curious what your thoughts are on all this from here until the end of the episode that i'm just like this isn't how it would go you know okay. um i don't so I do love the like suspenseful the Vader coming out of the shadows out of nowhere. He's just there, ignites his lightsaber. I love that Obi Wan is super weak. He he can't fight. He doesn't. He hasn't fought in ten years. I mean, he's he's gonna be really rusty. I do love that Vader's just kind of fucking with him. One handed. Like, one handed, right? Yeah. There's and, a part in the fight hunter where he, Vader just goes bump bump with the the lightsaber, and it's like the coolest. Like I've never seen like that visceral of a lightsaber move. Yeah. He's go go. I do love that Obi Wan's just getting wrecked, and that he yeah. can't hold his own, and that he is work. He's he's feel for for his life, and mm-hmm. he, there's that one part where he gets knocked to the ground, and I thought he was going like, to cut himself with his lightsaber because it's going everywhere, but yeah. he's just like on the ground, like catching his breath, just like I'm fucking dead, and I love that. What was kind of comical, and I think a lot of people like on reviews and Star Wars and Reddit and all that were like, you first see Vader, and like he like ignites his lightsaber, super cool, and then Obi Wan just does a. And it just runs away, and it's like this is like this is too like bitchy, too comic booky. Like, well, well, come on, what is yeah. this? Um, but I get that he's going to run away. Like, I understand that. Um, and then there were other parts with like the fire scene that we'll get to later on, where like I think it would have gone a little bit differently. Um, but we'll talk about that. Mm-hmm. But I do love this first initial fight of the first meeting of Anakin and Obi Wan, and it's very cool. Yeah. yeah, I think it's really cool. I think just like like you were saying, like it's so cool to see how like helpless Obi is. Like in this, like yeah. he really, he's got nothing in him. Like it's like move. Like he has no lightsaber moves. He's got nothing. He's just getting like he's on the ground like trying to block stuff, and he just looks kind of pathetic. And Vader's like, you know, at one point like basically Darth Vader's got one hand behind his back, and he's just like, he was yeah. having to take you down. Um, yeah, and then and then we get to the the fire part. And, I mean, so you didn't love the fire bit? So I really enjoyed the fire bit, but it's. We see, like, in the fight um, before the fire, we see Darth Vader. I guess it's right before the fire, actually. He he lifts Obi-Wan up with the yeah. force and is, like, choking so him. So cool. He, he's very cool. Very awesome. And then he, you know, ignites the stuff, and it's this big field of fire. And he's dragging Obi-Wan through the fire, which is brutal. You know, Obi-Wan's mm-hmm. screaming in pain and all that. And he's playing with him. I get it. And then he extinguishes the fire. Um, Darth Vader does. The fire goes away. Yeah. And then it's Obi-Wan sitting there. And then we see Tala from the ridge, and she shoots... You know, Vader says, "Hey, go get him," yeah. and then she shoots the stormtrooper. She shoots and reignites the fire, 
and then Vader's just kind of standing there, staring. And it's like you wouldn't you wouldn't force grab him or pull him towards you or extinguish the fire again and go get him. And you're just gonna watch this um this droid and Tala come and pick him up and you're just chilling. You're not gonna shoot them. Yeah. I yeah. don't love that. I would agree. The the fire, like almost like plot barrier was weird of like well, this is how they got out of it. It was just like they lit it on fire. And then yeah. they, they like hobbled away. The way I've tried to explain it in my head is that Anakin got his first look at this new Obi Wan and like and realized it's not the same person, not the same person, and like I'm gonna get, I can get this guy. Yeah. Like I, I have you heard? Um, I'm not gonna say the prevailing theory because I've only seen it like twice and I've really only like I haven't looked too deep in it. Sure. But have you seen what are the th- uh, what some of the theories are of who that droid is that maintenance or the loading droid? Oh, Ned B. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah. no. Who's like the theory? So is he Mace Windu? People, God, I hope so. Right? Uh, <laughs> God, no, no, uh, um, no. So when we first meet him, they're in that loading bay, and there's the secret passageway where, where we find yeah. what the path is. Um, and Leia, Obi Wan, and Tala are in that secret room, and the stormtroopers come in and try and like get the droid to yeah. open up and do all that. He's gonna fuck him up, and he has the as the hammer behind his back, right? Uh-huh. There's that close-up of that hammer, and it's like, people are like, that's a that's not a droid thing to do. The droid would just sit there, and it can't communicate, so it would just stand there. So people are like, that's a very human thing to do, to, like, hide a weapon to protect yourself. Oh. And then, what people, people took that, that, that shot, like, frame by frame, and it pans up from his legs up to the, the small of his back where he has the hammer, and his leg armor looks exactly like, co- like clone trooper armor. It's just spray-painted. So people think it's either, I've heard Wrecker, I've heard Rex, I've heard, actually just Wrecker and Rex. Um, so people think it's it, it could be a clone trooper that is disguising themselves to help with this path. And people think it's Wrecker because Wrecker is huge, he's burly, yeah. he can lift things like a droid would be able to. And so, and they're, they're pointing to the end of the episode where they drag him away and like Tala is like, hey, like, go get him safe. And, and they're just like, okay, yeah, whatever. And just like picks him up and moves around. And it's like that doesn't seem very droidy. Specifically with the with the hammer around his back, so that would be wild. I, if that's like if like yeah, at one point he takes so, off his mask and he's like, first off, Tamara Morrison doing the record voice yeah. would be fucking horrible. <laughs> like, oh, you don't want me around here, <laughs> like I would hate, I would absolutely hate to watch that on screen. Yeah. But um, <laughs> um, but I'm in. <laughs> but if you do look at, um, I'm sure you find it on Reddit or whatever, they have like side by side of like clone trooper leg armor and this droid close up, and it's like it's, it looks the exact same. It's very cool. That would make sense because it was, yeah, the droid not being able to communicate thing was like, oh, that's a weird Star Wars thing we've never encountered why, before. Why wouldn't it be able to, yeah. All droids would, that we've ever encountered can communicate. Yeah, beat your boobs or four words. Like, Fucking like, mouse droids are talking, bro. Right? Yeah. You think those things are just singing? No. They're saying something. Um, I'm very interested with, with this just total side conversation, but you mentioned it. Tamara Morrison is going to be used so much now in all this Star Wars canon. Like, I know this guy's gonna be in it forever, which is so so great in my opinion. I'm he's gonna be Rex. Um, like yeah. that's that's been like so heavily alluded to is that he's gonna be Rex. I wonder how much we see him in other shows as like younger clones and Rex and stuff. Like, will he will Andor like use clones at all? And like, will that like I'm curious how much he's just in all of these shows now. Um, yeah, so it's it's interesting because like depending on on what I guess a lot of the shows are. Post original trilogy, huh? Except for the animated stuff like Tales of the Jedi. And Andor, Andor is in the middle of prequels. Yeah, it's this time period um, is the first one. It would just have to be they'd have to like probably de aging if they're going to do live action stuff, which they can do, but that's just kind of a bigger task than yeah, yeah. Well, I guess actually not no, not no. specifically because, because clones in, have double aging. Yeah, he he looked pretty old. Yeah, in this, yeah, you're in right. Series. You're right. Never mind. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. See, so, it, it it'd be cool to. To see him actually be a clone, because everybody in episode two, when you see that clone trooper, everyone's like, this is the first time that Tamora Morrison wore clone armor, because everything was CGI in the prequels. Isn't that wild? So, like, this is the first time, it was just his head superimposed on these CGI dummies. And so people are just like, it's, it took him, what is it, 20-something years to actually wear clone armor. That just blows my hilarious. mind. Yeah, because not a single piece of clone armor was made for two or three. It's like, come on, man. That's how it was back then, man. They, what are you doing? They pushed the technology to get us here. 
we got a blue screen. That's all we need. That's all, that's all we need. Just keep going back that's to the blue need. screens. Um, <laughs> any any final thought? Oh, the, the episode ends with Leia getting recaptured by Reva. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't love it. Okay, first off, I've seen internet people being like, oh, how did she get through the tunnel so quick? Um, I think she put it together that this was going to the spaceport and just went to the spaceport. Yeah. Um, well, she's part 100%. of the Empire. She probably has a speeder and just flew it around. It's not hard to imagine in Star Wars. 100%. I just, um, yeah. Reddit with this show I, is insane, but. We'll talk about it in episode four. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the, looking back, I still don't love it and I really didn't like it um, when I watched it the first time. Yeah. Just because it was like, hey, she got taken, then she got saved, now she got taken again. Like, I don't want it to be just like a, wild goose chase going back and forth yeah. um i didn't think it was a strong ending for a really cool episode i would agree i think it was a very weak ending it should have ended in but something different it should have ended on something with the, the problem i think with the ending is that everything has been about obi-wan and anakin and then mm-hmm. it just like oh Reva got leia like like every yep. ending has had to do with like obi-wan getting closer to anakin yeah and like this was just like all right now she's like oh we got to push the story forward yeah like, like obi already got beat up like now we got oh, oh she got captured all right yeah yeah but anyways that was my, that was my final thoughts on episode three it was phenomenal to watch obi-wan and anakin fight again so cool. surpassed so cool. my expectations on on how dark it could be i was very intrigued by that yeah absolutely so, thank you so much for watching our th- episode reaction to the third part of obi-wan we'll see it next week or maybe like tomorrow for episode four